Management. How's it going? My name is Adam. This is the Orchard Corals YouTube channel, where the goal is to get you a little better at reefing every day. Today, we're going to be looking at Bryopsis, a nuisance algae, and looking into ways to get rid of it, why it's so hard to get rid of it, and what you can do if it's in your tank. Let's go! Bryopsis is one of the hardest algaes to get rid of because there's really nothing that eats it. With green hair algae, you can get turbo snails, you can get hermit crabs, other things. With bubble algae, you can get emerald crabs. But with Bryopsis, you really have to get rid of it yourself. As I was researching how to get rid of it, I came across three main ways that I'm going to show you now. The first way is to kill it with fire. Just kidding. All right, let's talk about the actual ways to remove it. The first way is through manual removal. This is the easiest way to get rid of Bryopsis, but it only works if you have a rock that you can take out of the tank or if it's on a frag plug that you can get rid of. Before we get started, we're gonna need hydrogen peroxide, 3%. We're gonna need a bowl that you can dip the zoas in. We're gonna need a cutting board that nothing else touches. This is just for fragging zoas. We're gonna need a scalpel. We're gonna need some gel type super glue and frag plugs. Not shown here, we're also going to need a toothbrush to scrub the frags. For frag plugs, uh, what I like to do is just mainly remove it with a scalpel or cut around the frag using bone cutters. This is really easy if it's only on a small portion of it, but if it's kind of intertwined with the frag, whether it's a zoanthid or SPS coral, uh, it can be a little more difficult. Then I'm taking my scalpel and actually removing, uh, I'm removing the base of the zoanthid from the frag plug so that I can then glue it onto another plug. One of the benefits of manual removal of Bryopsis is that you're not putting any chemicals into your tank. You're not having to raise any levels of anything that could affect other corals, other invertebrates or fish. Um, you're not adding any chemicals in the tank. You're literally just using your own force and removing it manually. One of the problems with this is that you, if you miss anything at all, it's going to grow back. So you have to really make sure that you have manu manually removed all of the braps as possible. So the second way to remove Bryopsis is through a dip of hydrogen peroxide. Now I'm going to do a warning. This is really only, I've only ever done this for zoanthids. So that's the only method that I have tried it on. I've never tried this on LPS. I've never tried it on any SPS. So if you're going to do that, I, I wouldn't suggest it at all for SPS. LPS, maybe try it for a little bit less time. But the general process is you get hydrogen peroxide from your local store. I use the 3% hydrogen peroxide. You put that in a container and then you dip the coral in it for three minutes. Don't water it down with, it, with anything. Uh, just dip the coral for three minutes, take it out, rinse it off in clean uh, salt water, and then put it back in your tank. Now for zoanthids, uh, they're going to be a little annoyed. You're going to see them close up for a couple days. And in a video that I'll show soon, you'll actually see that there's little blisters around the skirt. After about four days, uh, everything comes back normally, uh, and I've had no problem doing this method on a few different zoanthid corals. The hydrogen peroxide method is again, only worth it if you can actually take the frag out. Uh, you, some people have injected hydrogen peroxide directly into their tank, but I don't suggest this just because, again, you're introducing something else into your tank. For me, this killed all of the bryopsis on the frag plugs, uh, and I didn't have to worry about any stray pieces coming back and growing more. The final way of removing bryopsis is by slowly raising the magnesium levels in your tank. Now, just fair warning, I haven't personally done this because I used the manual removal and as well as the hydrogen peroxide. But at, through researching this, I found that a lot of people have had really good success raising the magnesium levels. This method is really good if you can't take the rocks or the frags or uh, wherever the, the bryopsis is out of your tank. But really, this is the only method if you can't remove the actual bryopsis. So the first thing is you'll have to track the actual levels of your magnesium prior to starting this. The goal with this method is to raise your magnesiums to around 1500 parts per million and keep it there for about a month as you let the bryopsis melt away. Um, at this level, it's a lot easier to just remove the bryopsis manually with your fingers, uh, or in a lot of cases, it will just die off and melt away. One of the things that you can use to increase your magnesium level is Kent Tecum magnesium supplements. There are some other trace elements in that. So once you've run the course of magnesium and all of the bryopsis has melted away, you'll want to use carbon to remove all of those uh, trace elements that were left over. After about a month, 
you should start seeing the bryopsis just melt away. Uh, keep it there for about a week or two uh, and then stop dosing. So all three of these methods are really good at removing bryopsis. If you personally have used something else, I'd love to know about it, so drop a comment down below. If you found this video helpful uh, in any way, please like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and it helps me know that this content is getting somewhere and helping people. If you've made it this far, why don't you watch this video on Green Star Polyps and I'll see you next week.